Welcome to my introduction to Navigraph and why to use Navigraph. I had done a Navigraph video uh, in the past, a quick planning video to show you how to chart a plan and import it into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and I got a lot of uh, good responses from it so I decided to do a series uh, right from beginning through to understanding charts in advanced and uh, we'll talk about that in this episode which is the first, like I said, in a series, an introduction to Navigraph. Uh, to start, I want to say that I'm in no way affiliated with Navigraph or Microsoft, either as an employee or sponsor. I do, however, enjoy these products and simulated flight, so I wanted to share that passion with uh, anybody that uh, also has the same passion, especially with the introduction of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and so many new people coming to the hobby. This is the first in a series and will walk you through from a basic understanding of what Navigraph is to an explanation of charts, procedures, and plates and how to use them, and to fly an IRFire plan. Uh, that, that you have planned within Navigraph and, and maybe imported into Microsoft Flight Simulator. First, we're going to have a look at Navigraph, which in my opinion is a requirement to not only create an extra layer of realism in your flights, but also to fully enjoy Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So what is Navigraph? Well, you're looking at Navigraph right now on screen. And Navigraph offers updated airport charts, like you'll see here and en route charts and navigational databases to increase the realism of gaming and flight simulators. It's based on data sourced from Jeppesen, a Boeing company, and updated every 28 days according to the real-life ARAC cycle. So why do you need Navigraph? There are a number of reasons why you might want to use Navigraph. It helps you navigate from point to point and accurately reflects how you would depart and arrive to specific airports and how you would travel between them. Here's an ILS approach here. Airport diagrams are extremely useful while taxing. I'll bring one up. It leads you um, from gate to gate, for instance, or parking to runways and back. Departure procedures, and we have one here. Tell you how to fly from the runway to the airways leading you in the direction that you want to fly. Arrival and approach procedures like we have here. Here's an arrival procedure and an approach procedure on, I believe, let's see, oh, this is an RNAV approach. These will tell you which waypoints you need to pass and under what conditions like altitude or speed restrictions including available landing systems at the destination airport. Approach plates will give you also the appropriate ILS localizer frequencies and restrictions. World high and low charts will give you safe minimum altitudes to fly along with nav aid frequencies and much more. Most importantly, and in my opinion, Navigraph is a better tool to purchase and stick with long term for all your flight simulators is that Navigraph allows you to update the NavAid information in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to match Navigraph's information so that your approach or departure and arrival charts within the simulator exactly match Navigraph and the Jeppesen charts they use, which is the largest database of accurate worldwide charting information. This ensures that the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is the most accurate information possible and is always updated to reflect real world data. Real world data. Without updating this information in MSFS 2020, your routes, including your SID or star charts, may not align with the charts you download for free from the various sources like Skyvector or other aeronautical websites. This is also the reason why, although I and yourself, if you are a pilot, may prefer something like ForeFlight, for instance, that Navigraph is a better solution for flight simulation, as ForeFlight will not closely match your simulator if it does not ensure that your simulator's nav aids are not updated to match the information in Navigraph. In my opinion, this is the most important feature of Navigraph and allows me to enjoy IFR flights that exactingly match both my plans and my charts. Future third-party developers are already using Navigraph to implement this charting data within their aircraft, like the G3000 can do in real life. I'm definitely excited to see what third parties bring to us in the future in regards to this. Flying with Navigraph closely aligns you with the information required to fly your virtual planes very closely to how a pilot might in real life. Although a lot of this information can be daunting at first, glass, at first glance, a brief overview of how the information is laid out 
and what it all means and you'll be flying and planning routes like a pro in no time. Navigraph FMS Data Manager keeps the waypoints and frequencies in the, in, the, in the database within Microsoft Flight Simulator up to date so that it corresponds to the charts that you see here in Navigraph. Let's first take a look at the products offered by Navigraph and how to use them and then a very basic first flight plan. And in future series we will look at each of these portions a little more in depth. So Navigraph is the main component of their offering which you see on screen. This is where you're going to begin many of your flights in the planning stage. When we open Navigraph we are presented usually with our last flight that we've sort of set up and done here. But we can go up to flights here and click unload and we are now presented just with a blank screen and I will get rid of this and zoom out here for you to take a look at and I will switch this to the low, low on route IFR map. We'll zoom in to the Toronto area here. This is, this is the area I'm familiar with. We can switch to the low or high on route maps or world maps. Scroll in, you can see Toronto here in the top right where we get a better picture of the information provided to pilots of this region. Here we can see Toronto Lester B. Pearson International Airport along with another local airport that I'm familiar with, CNC3. Now, this is difficult to see. It's just up here, but I will switch this to low on route here. And you can now very quickly see in blue Toronto Lester B. Pearson International and Brampton Caledon CNC3. Airports in blue, like these two, have published charts. We can click them here. We can still find out a bunch of information about airports that don't have published charts and the difference is in green they don't have published charts but if I click one the information for the airport comes up and we have three tabs general runways and comms so we can definitely see the headings of those runways and we can see general information here like the elevation of the airport its IFR capability is no and it's a public airport with a 1600 foot as the longest runway and now if we go to an airport, an international airport like Pearson, we can see by this little symbol here and the fact that it's blue that it has published charts. So if we look at published charts for Pearson for a large airport, we'll click this icon here. You can see on the left hand side here, there are a lot of published charts for Pearson International Airport. It can be daunting at first to look at such a large airport. Uh, our star charts, our approach charts and taxi uh, airport information and um, our SID charts or our departure charts and STARS arrival. So this can be a lot to take in at first but if we click on a smaller airport like Brampton Caledon CNC3 and look at the charts available for that we see it's a little less daunting. You know we have one airport information chart we have no departure charts in fact our departure information is included in the airport info here at the bottom. You can see takeoff and departure procedure for runway 33 is climb heading 326 degrees to 1700 feet. So, planning a route is pretty easy in Navigraph. What we want to do is close this down and we want to click here flights and new flight and we're going to click manual input. Now you can use the map to click some of these airports if you find one and add it to your plan but usually you'd kind of know what airport you're flying out of and know its identifier. So we're going to very quickly put in the identifiers for the airports that we're going to create a route for which is CYYZ and it comes up in the search and you could have typed Toronto there also so you can use this to search and CYUL and then we're going to click Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport after clicking that we're going to leave this alone for now and click create so there essentially is a direct route from our um, origin airport up here to our destination airport and you can see it being filled in CYYZ to CYUL. So then what we want to do is we could again plan this manually and start clicking routes and manually adding them but what we're going to do here is click auto route and we're going to use low airways because of the type of aircraft we're flying we'll be flying under 18,000 feet with a general uh, aviation aircraft and we're going to click calculate. So what you can see now is it's generated somewhat of a route for us here through some nav aids. Now we can go over here to where we're leaving and we notice a dash line which means a portion of our route is not complete 
And if you notice that it's in pink, you can also look up here and you can see that what isn't complete is our departure. So if we go over here and click the eyeball, we can view all the available departures from Pearson International Airport. And if we take a look at where we're headed, we're headed to this nav beacon first. So the best available departure for us is this one right here, whatever that is. So we will click it and it will bring it up and it's linked to the 10-3S Verito 6 chart. And we can, we, we, I happen to know uh, from the general aviation area of Pearson that we're going to be leaving on runway 23. So we can unclick runway 05 and click runway 23 and that adds the portion of this route in purple here to allow us to take off from runway 23 and join our departure and our departure will bring us to our first waypoint. So with that visualization, it's very easy to see, especially on a large airport like Pearson, every available departure chart and click on it and we will click add to route. And that's been done and you can see that up here at the very top where we see our departure chart in pink, Verdo 6, Verdo 6, sorry, that's not a zero, that's an O, and uh, our first waypoint. So if we scroll down here, we can also click Show Waypoint Labels. And these will be the waypoint labels from our departure on runway 23 uh, into our um, SID chart and into our first waypoint. So we haven't done anything spectacular. We will close that off, and the first part of our journey is planned. Same on the other end, on our arriving end. We have a dashed portion of our, our, of our plan right now that means it's not complete. And if we look up here, we can see that the dashed portion is our arrival. So we can do the same thing that we did with our uh, star charts. And we can click the eyeball here. And we can see all the potential arrivals uh, that come in to our destination in Montreal. And this one here leads right off um, from where we want to be. So if we click that here and we want to land on an ILS of runway 10. So we're going to click runway 10 and we can show uh, the waypoints here and click add to route. And if we want to click our approaches here, we can just select now our ILS runway 10 and that completes our route the last little bit. So now, you can see very easily we've created a complete route with our SID chart, so our departure on the other end and our waypoints in between and our star arrival chart and our ILS uh, on runway 10. And it's that easy. From here, we can click on flights and export this to any type of uh, um, um, we, we can even copy just it to the clipboard and paste it in, but we can use the .pln, which will import straight into FSX or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and save that off. And when we load Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we can load that flight plan into the world uh, database there so that uh, we don't have to replan it on the other end. During our flight, we can watch the moving maps. So you could have this on another screen and in the top right hand corner here you click enable moving maps and when a new moving maps is enabled what you'll see even if you have an overlay of, a, of an airport here we can do that by clicking uh, our departure here and click show chart overlay and this is very nice because it shows our full map with the chart overlay on top of it and um, uh, our expected um, uh, route to Montreal and you can actually see your plane flying over this map while you fly in Flight Simulator uh, uh, 2020. It's extremely easy to connect. Uh, there was nothing to it, I promise. And it just shows a little pink. Uh, I will show some uh, video overlay of this uh, on a taxiway from another flight uh, at this moment so that you can see the, the plane moving. Uh, it's extremely helpful for taxiways. Uh, well, for the first video, that is a brief overview, and I hope this has helped you gain an understanding of what Navigraph is and why it's so useful. In our next video, we will go through some of the terminology of the information displayed on the low and high on route maps. And then uh, in videos after that, I will start to get into the explanation of SID and star charts, which describe your, or describe your departure and arrival. And finally, we'll go through approach plates for RNAV GPS and ILS approaches, along with airport charts and more. 
Hope you enjoyed this series, and if you've got something from it, please hit the thumbs up to let me know to keep it up and to keep making these videos for you. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks, guys. Take care.